Today, this is lecture number seven, and I'm going to be talking about informed consent. Now, there are a lot of legal issues that arise around this, but basically, it's only fair for the patient to receive a balanced opinion, even if you believe one thing and you know that your colleague down the road believes something quite different. You need to give them fair information. Now, many, I think, professionals deliberately um, push patients into the treatment they want or they personally prefer, um, which I think is unfair. And I've always felt one should be balanced about this. But we do have a problem because orthodontists, most of them, really believe that fixed appliance is the best way of getting straight teeth, and they may be, um, whereas people who support orthotropics, like myself, sincerely believe that fixed appliance is actually very harmful. So we both need to state the position fairly. Um, you need to also mention other appliances, you know, the Maya Brace and uh, Invisalign, um, because they all claim to have a part. I personally believe that um, Invisalign can do a lot of harm, but lots of people don't accept that, and it would be wrong of me to say so. Now, um, there is a problem here too, because orthodontists generally think that their job is to achieve straight teeth, and they're not so interested in the face. However, orthotropists, by and large, think the face is much more important. And actually, I think this is uh, being shown that the public like a good-looking face more than they're actually concerned about the straightness of the teeth. Um, we also have the problem of what happens in the long term. Orthodontists accept that their treatment is not permanent and needs retaining for a lifetime. And that raises all sorts of other problems which we needn't discuss now. But orthotropists believe, and I think it's true, that if you can correct the posture, then the teeth will stay straight for a lifetime. There'll be no tendency for them to relapse. Now, we have another issue too, the question of surgery. If there is an overjet of, well, in many countries, more than four or five millimetres, but um, I was initially trained six to eight millimetres, then you're, uh, many people are going to suggest that surgery is the only way it can be treated. I completely reject that myself. Um, I, over my lifetime, I have treated about 30 cases where they had been told that they could only be treated with surgery. And I have got as good a result as could be achieved with surgery. And I think sometimes the result of orthotropics has been better than surgery. And of course, surgery is very traumatic and occasionally has disastrous consequences. So the question of informed consent here is very important. And I'm sad to say that almost all my orthodontic colleagues refuse to mention that orthotropics can avoid most surgery. I think this is wrong of them, but that is a matter for others. But essentially, I do think that all patients should be told. Um, I did a survey once and found out that 93% of all patients want to be told of any alternatives to surgery. People don't like surgery and for good reasons, but the orthodontists, particularly the orthodontic surgeons in the UK, are really not telling them this. And this is part of their message today. Um, you should bear in mind, possibly as the most important thing, when you are giving or obtaining consent from patients. 
that it is not what you think they should know, but what they might want to know. And I think that's the right place to stop this. See you for the next occasion.